I've got to put my hat on today so my head's bloody freezing. Anyhow, I was just thinking about again about these cognitive operators. And there's one section of that which I haven't covered yet. I've covered all the rest of them, I think. Let me just see if I can run through a list to make sure. Cause, the cognitive operators are, uh, just in case you haven't seen any of these other videos, are little routines that the brain is supposed to go through to sort out the data of the you know, kind of raw data that comes into the senses and turns it into experience, gives order and sense to our experience of the world. And there's a number of these routines. Let's see if I can name them. The causal operator, the quantitative operator, abstractive, reductive, holistic, uh, binary. The one I had a bit of a problem with in the previous video, the existential operator. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And then there's this last one. I think it's the last one. Probably missed one out. Never mind. Uh, which they call, this is Eugene DeKilly and uh, Andrew Newberg use these terms. And they call it the, oh god, what do they call it? The emotional value operator. Emotional value operator. And what they're basically saying there is that, that uh, the data that comes in the, from the world, at some point in its journey through that processing, it, uh, it picks up a positive or negative valency. In other words, that we... Uh, yeah, we give it a kind of mark out of 10, really, in, in, in terms of whether it's positive or negative, whether it's a good thing or not. We assign it emotional value on that, uh, and that well, not, certainly in that piece of writing I was thinking of. In that simple scale, it's either something good or something not so good. The emotional value operator. I think there's a few things around that. The first thing is that it, what it reminds me of is something that comes out of Antonio Damasio's work, the neuroscientist Antonio Damasio. And he talks about what he calls the somatic marker hypothesis, which is very similar in some ways, but I think it's inflected in, a, in a, an interesting way. But what Damasio is saying is that, um, is that these things that come in through our sense data, you know, the, feels, the things that we feel, you know, like my feeling of, feeling of this fence under my hand. Oops, is there a document? Oh, it's Max. Come on, you two. Uh, you know, on the sight of these trees and all these sounds and up here. All this stuff, according to Masio, is somatically marked. Come on, pup! The dogs are fairly good, but they might just uh, have a little scrap here to get jealous. Come on, guy! Come on, guy! Oh, oh we'll go this way. Anyhow, so it's, uh, according to Masio, they're somatically marked. So they're uh, some... So, so some... Uh, and they're marked in, uh, in Damasio by the body, that's why it's somatic marker. There's some aspect of the body does the marking, it's like a, uh, the, uh, I don't know, like the adrenal system or, or some, uh, some aspect of the sympathetic or the parasympathetic sy systems do this marking and gives this value. Come on guy, leave Max alone, come on, come on. Uh, and. Uh, as I said, that which, which prevents it being, which prevents this data just being kind of sterile and, uh, and valueless. And when that system goes wrong, in Damasio at least, it leaves us unable to make good choices. Come on, come on, go on, go on. Go on. So I say, I say it leaves us unable to make good choices, and, and uh, Damasio gives some case studies of that in his book uh, Descartes' Error, I think it is. Anyhow, the. Uh, when that appears in uh, New uh, Newberg and the Achilles uh, writing, where as I say they refer to it as the emotional value operator. Go on, go on. Got to keep these dogs apart. I better come back to this video later.